As the Ohio, Kentucky, Indiana, Indiana Region Council of Government CEO, our next scheduled speaker has been driving forward smart and connected transportation conversations for nearly two years and is dedicated to building a smarter, greater Cincinnati. Although Mark Polsinski can't be with us this morning, unfortunately, for personal reasons, his efforts should not be overlooked. In his place, we are fortunate to hear from Deputy Executive Director of OKI, who will say a few words about building a smart and connected region. As OKI Deputy Executive Director, he's responsible for all transportation planning functions of the agency, including the transportation plan, TIP, project prioritization process, and special studies. With that, please join me in welcoming Bob Kaler. Thank you very much. It's uh, great to be here. For those of you who don't know OKI, we're the Metropolitan Planning Organization for the eight county region in which we live. We have the four northern, three northern Kentucky counties, Boone Kenton and Campbell, southeastern Indiana, Dearborn County, and then our Ohio counties of Hamilton, Butler, Warren, and Claremont. Our primary charge our, uh, is transportation planning. We also do a significant amount of environmental planning as well. Uh, but basically, our charge is to plan the Tri-State's transportation system and invest in that system as well. So as such, our mission to improve quality of life and economic vitality for all aligns very well with the Smart Regions Coalition. We understand just how important, how critical this conversation is today. Technological innovation really is occurring at lightning pace, and our region's ability to thrive and compete really does depend on the preparedness to embrace what's next. New technologies are shaping just about every aspect of our life. What's happening in transportation is especially fascinating to me. Of course, the shiny ornament in the room is, uh, which is catching all the imagination of the public and all of yours as well, is the autonomous vehicle. Forget the dot coms, forget the social networks. The hotspot for real research and investment right now is the autonomous vehicle. Even all the dot coms are in. No less than 30 companies ranging from the major auto manufacturers, Google, Apple, Uber, and the silicon startups are all racing to build a self-driving car. Of course, these systems are leveraging great advancements in all forms of technology, including LiDAR, GPS, high-speed cameras, artificial intelligence, making all this happen. And I have no doubt that it will. So you're seeing some of the features in current model years, and even a couple years ago, self parking vehicles, lane departure warning, backup cameras, all those features are building towards uh, someday having a car that just does everything for you. But until we have flying cars, we at OKI will continue to play a role in planning and funding our region's infrastructure. This role is critical. We are tasked with providing a well-maintained and optimized transportation system. We are tasked with understanding what our future roadways and transit systems will look like. I've been at OKI for more years than you can imagine, but um, we, we've got a great uh, balance there of planning and implementation. And we have that because we have a robust project prioritization process. Uh, the problem is what we measured all these years ago and still today, those items are changing. And how do we, how do we change our processes to make room for the needs for the future? I don't really know exactly how That'll all pan out yet, but I do know that we will depend heavily on technology. It's almost certain we'll need that to get to the next step. And that, that might mean new advanced materials, those that help our systems last longer, our roadways last longer, um, stronger, smarter, all those things. Uh, but it, of course, will mean technology as well, implementing technologies that allow us to squeeze out every ounce of capacity that we have, every inch of pavement that we can use for our vehicles, our bicycles, our pedestrians, all those things. Uh, but really, I believe this is only solvable through autonomous and connected vehicles. Uh, so now I have a lot of questions. I don't have a lot of answers for you today. Others may have those for you later in the day. But I'm going to throw out some questions for you to, to think about. How do we incorporate all these processes into our planning process? How do autonomous vehicles and connected vehicles fit into that equation? What does this mean for our whole vehicle-based transportation system? 
what happens to the old, decades old approaches of using the highway capacity manual to figure out how many lanes we need on our roadways? You know, how does that all work? How can we advance the rate of adoption of these technologies to get us where we need to be? Other questions arise as well. How does our transit system change to reflect the on-demand world in which we live? What happens to the 40-foot coach? Is it still around? Is it still necessary? Probably is. Uh, but what other features will be needed to optimize that transit system of, of the future? Freight, it will, it will still need to be delivering freight. Uh, maybe unmanned aerial vehicles could play a role. We don't know just yet. Parking, are we gonna need more parking, less parking? Where will that parking be? Will, the, will we just summon our cars and have, us, have that vehicle pick us up at the curb? If that's the case, how do we manage that curb front space? That'll be a premium. And maybe that's what I should do, invest in curb front space. Or maybe that's a city get rid of their parking meters and just run out the, the curb fronts by the minute. Anyway, the, the challenge for us as Americans, we're accustomed to purchasing vehicles, owning them, taking them where we want, parking them somewhere. And the whole culture change of, of giving up that thing that we own. I don't know, those of you that have that favorite tool in the, in the garage, you know, that you use a lot, it's just common nature that you would buy that if you're gonna use it a lot. And we as Americans use our cars a lot, so it seems, you know, reasonable that we bought a, a vehicle and we use it. But really to be an optimized system, maybe that's a vehicle that is shared, no one really owns it, it just goes around and makes our lives easier, making us, or enabling us to get to where we need to go. Well, either way, at OKI, we have to plan a network that involves all the surface transportation modes, and we have to look out 20 years. That's our federal charge. And so these questions demand consideration as part of our planning process. Finally, how do we pay for a system based on gasoline taxes in a world where electric cars are making up a larger market share with every passing month? We've heard recently in the news how many major manufacturers are changing over to uh, elect electrical vehicle fleets. To ensure the, the success of our region, we must predict the impact of technology, not only on transportation, but our lives. You know, getting back to those how we think as Americans kind of thing. This is our real challenge. Smart regions is an important event because we are here not only to talk about the future, but to help cha change it. The entire world is becoming smarter and regions that do not adapt will be left behind. Their jobs will disappear, people will move away, social infrastructure will be damaged. Those regions will have no future. No future. That's kind of scary. As we look to smarter future at OKI, we have the responsibility of building a transportation system that is central to a smart region. And make no mistake, an integrated smart transportation system is essential to our region's ability to be relevant in a world of new technologies and connectivity. Simply put, excuse me, simply put, without a viable transportation system in the future, you just can't get there from here. Thank you for your time. Thank you very much, Robert. Your leadership at OKI is appreciated by everyone here.